Hello. Today we're going to talk about the if function. Now the if function is, in my opinion, one of the most important functions in Excel. Now, as a standalone function, it's not one that I use that frequently, but it really is the basis for a lot of the more complicated functions, like your sum ifs, your count ifs, average ifs, and there's just so many things that build on it. If there's one function that you need to understand, it's this one. So I've got this wall of data right here. So I'm going to do three examples. First one, let's say, so I want to figure out whether this house is over 2,000 square feet. Now, one way I can do that is just by using my eyes. It's not, but I want to use a function to determine this. So I'm going to head to the formulas tab. I'm going to click on logical and if. So the logical group is where this resides. I say logical if, just logical if, because you need to know where it is. Logical test, what this is saying is saying, so what is the determining cell for the row? So an if function is a row-wise function. In other words, for row two, what's the de what tells me the square footage? And the answer to that is B2. So I go, if B2 is greater than 2,000, so that's my criteria. Notice a full-blown inequality there. I tab on down. If it is, I'm going to say yes. Otherwise, I'm going to say no. You're free to write whatever you want. Yes and no makes sense. Notice that when I deselect the text box, I get quotes around it, so I don't have to enter those manually. Um, you can say you can see it's going to be no, which is correct. I click OK. Cool trick when you've got a wall of text like this is if you double click the fill handle, it will go all the way to the bottom, which is better than a click and a drag. Now when I fill handle that and I see all no's, I'm a little concerned. There's a yes here, but if you look at the square footage, most of these houses are, are well under 2,000 square feet, and that does in fact look like the first yes. If it was all no's or all yeses, I'd be concerned. Sometimes you will make mistakes when you're putting these formulas together. So let's talk about how to fix a formula. And this isn't really if, this is just about any function. But you have this FX button right here, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of what this does, but if you click on it, it pops up that dialog box that we were just looking at. And most of the time when people make mistakes on these, it's because they have the wrong inequality operator there. And so fixing it is always better than just starting from scratch. Let's do the next one. So expensive. I have to make up a criteria here. So let's say an expensive house is a house over with an asking price greater than or equal to $200,000. So let's write that it. So logical if this is a row wise function. So my determining cell here for expensive is asking price. If asking price is greater than or equal to $200,000, you don't ever want to put a comma there. I know it's not easy to write and read without commas, but you don't want to put it there, then yes. Otherwise, no. If I click OK, I get no, and that looks like the case. If I double click the fill handle, hmm, that's a little concerning. There's my first yes, and in fact, that is the first house over $200,000. So I probably should have picked a different breaking point, but uh, that works. Now, one of the things that people usually ask Let's open up that dialog box again. Is there more than one right way to write these? And there always is. Like for example, the opposite of greater than or equal to 2,000, 200,000 is less than, which I don't know if that's intuitive or not. And so you can always write these backwards. And if you write them backwards, you end up reversing the messages. And this may be making sense to you and it may not, but you can always invert them. Right? Nothing changed. It just depends. Would you rather write it in terms of a true or in terms of a false? So now this literally reads, if the cell is less than 200,000, say no, otherwise say yes. Right. So you can always write it either forwards or backwards, and uh, they're both going to generate the same things. Sometimes you can get even trickier depending on the data set. So let's do the last one here, which is reduction. And for reduction, I'm going to write this formula by hand, and maybe you'll learn something from that as well. So let's say if the house has been on the market for greater than 300 days, then perhaps it should be reduced. We'll say a yes, no. And so watch how this goes. I'm going to manually enter the formula here. I zoomed way in. Sorry about that. So. Every formula starts with an equal sign. The name of the function is if, then I open up my parentheses. Now, if you remember, there were three things in that dialog box. The first one was the condition. So if days on market is greater than 300, and now those are what you call arguments, and those text boxes or arguments are separated by commas. 
So if it's greater than 300, then reduce. That's going to be my message. So that means it needs to be reduced. And now when I'm doing it like this, I manually have to put in those uh, parentheses, uh, comma. Otherwise, my message would be no reduction. Close my quotes, close my parentheses, I press enter, and you can see how it works. If I f zoom out a bit and fill handle that, you'll notice this needs to be reduced, this needs to be reduced, this does not need to be reduced. Now, if, if this is just the first time you've seen an if function, then you should probably just be sticking with the dialog box. But when I show people this idea that you can do it through just writing the formulas by hand, you understand additionally why commas are not okay, right? Why you never want to put commas in these numbers because it just messes up the raw format of the uh, formula. So there's no wrong way to do it. I showed you a couple ways. Um, that if function is going to come up in many different ways by the time you're done learning about Excel. So make sure that this makes sense to you because as I said earlier, this is the basis for a lot of the more complicated functions which you can learn later on. So now you've seen the if function and now it's just a matter of practicing it a whole bunch because if I say it three times maybe it'll stick. You're going to be using this a lot. Thanks for watching.